Oh, I messed it up after all that. Hello, I saw um, Amy was in, Byron was in, Rick was in. Who else was in, Michelle? Um, Ed was in. Edward was in. JF603 was in. JF, everybody's in. Is the picture all right? I, I had my, I did have my data off. My, my SIM card was switched off. I forgot to turn it on in time for this epic video. <laughs> I'm in a right pickle today. It's much harder to do a cooking video in a, in a scenario, you know, when we used to do these back home, we had everything with us, all the gear. All I've got is a phone, a handful of basic cooking appliances, um, and the camera angle's a little bit tricky. I've got this tiny little counter here. But anyway, we're going to do it. Uh, uh, it's just going to be a bit of fun. And if people have questions, there's been a lot of questions on my flatbread videos. I get a lot of interest in making simple flatbreads, and people ask questions. I'll go through some of those questions. If anyone asks them, repeats them here, I'll, I'll answer them also. But we're just gonna have a bit of fun. We're gonna make a very simple flatbread. It doesn't need any yeast. Um, it's probably the most, one of my favorite breads, ridiculously or not, it's one of my favorite breads. It's got no yeast. I think it doesn't play with your sort of stomach at all. Uh, it tastes delicious. And literally you can, you could knock this up in, Ten minutes or so, just a minute. So you could knock this up in ten minutes, but I like to let the the uh, the dough uh, bloom a little bit. That means the flour starts to be absorbed by the water. Go on, sorry. Uh, Leo says hello, and Annie says hello, Petri says hello. Lee, Lee, Leo, no. Leo, L Lionel. Maybe it's not spelled like that. Okay, Petri's in. Annie's in. Annie. Annie Bowers. Um, yep. Yeah, so. Michelle's, Michelle's over there. I can't move the camera too much. I will do little move arounds if I need to get in close. Uh, let's see how disastrous this goes. Um, I haven't got scales. Now, I'm always a big sort of proponent of using weights, and there's, we can talk about that as we go along. But I've made this bread so many times. I can almost do it with my eyes closed. It's more a sort of touch thing. Um, but ideally, scales are good, but we're not going to bother with scales today. We're going to go for sort of feeling and texture. Is, it, is the sound okay because we're using a um, quite a way from the camera to get this slightly wider angle? Uh, if Rick's in there, I've got my little uh, mic, Rick. Uh, mic, Rick? <laughs> mic, Rick? Got my little mic, Rick. You know, the mics we talked about when I was in, and I managed to get hold of my uh, little lavalier mic, so I'm hoping that's going to work around. Got my little Rick mic. And the other thing is Byron's birthday today. It's 31 today. Yes, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you happy birthday dear byron happy birthday to you glad you came in late. i wanted to sing to you today and if i could make these breads for you i would everybody wish byron a happy birthday the guy's an absolute legend we have julian we have uh, claire in stuart's in and they all say the sound is good sounds good can you hear michelle as well in the background uh my microphone's just here so hopefully she's picking up so jill stuart Claire. Claire, hello everybody. Everybody, any questions? Uh, chuck them across to Michelle. You can see we've got this funny little gas stove. It's just like a, it's almost like a barbecue, uh, like a camping stove, but it works fine. Um, let's get and make bread. I'm going to get messy. I'm going to get messy and sticky, but I'll show you how we don't need to get too messy and sticky. You know, like my little, my little flour bucket. I just found that today. Um, so what I'm going to do is I, you can use a cup, any sort of cup you want. It can be a measuring cup. It can be a teacup. It really doesn't matter. We're not going for absolute volumes here, um, but we are going to need to know we're, for our water content, we're going to need to use the same cup, not, not the same cup as you, but you're going to use the same cup for your flour. So if you're doing this with me, don't scoop your cup into the flour because that will compact it down and um, that can cause problems uh, when you're actually making any <laughs> any bread recipe. Scales are the way to go, by the way. You're going to get more accuracy with scale. But I'm actually going to use a spoon and I'm actually just going to um, spoon in. I'm going to go for two cups. These are probably close to a, a cup measurement, actually a US cup measurement. Um, this flour that I'm using is a beautiful bread flour that comes from here, obviously in Turkey. I think this is the same flour they use to make those simit. Uh, you, I would prefer if you were using a bread flour, 
mainly because it's got good gluten in it. Um, a lot of people say to me, can you, can you use all purpose? Uh, yes, you can, um, but you'll get less elasticity. And I liken it probably to when you were a kid and you're trying to blow bubbles with, with a bit of bubble gum. You know, you, you can get certain bubble gums will give you lovely big bubbles and some, particularly if you're using chewing gum or something, gives you tiny little bubbles, you know, or, or breaks very easily. Well, say, what's that, uh, Hubba Bubba? Yeah. Hubba Bubba makes great big bubbles and it sort of pops on your face. That's your bread flour. All-purpose flour is the one that you can just about go and it goes pop, 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 never, never gets a decent bubble. So we're going with bread flour, it's better. All-purpose flour will do, but you'll get less elasticity. Uh, Annie says, please say hi to my daughter, Ishmael. Hi, Ishmael. How are you, sweetheart? Umit says, welcome to Istanbul. Thank you, Umit. And Ben S said, just realised it's 3 p.m. UK time, Steve's kitchen time. I'm glad I'm just it, it is Steve's kitchen time. Two cups, okay, of bread flour. Um, I'm going to make wraps. We're actually going to make, make our bread, but this particular bread could be used for anything. Uh, when we used to make it at home, the kids would use it whether they want peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, peanut butter and jam sandwiches, whether you wanted to use it to make, um, you know, a, a nice wrap, a bit like a tortilla. Uh, pizza base it makes great pizza base so you could actually use it you just actually adjust it slightly for a pizza base make it a little bit thicker we can talk about that now i'm gonna you want seasoning don't underdo the salt uh, it's you want probably about a teaspoon of salt in with two cups like this um you can lessen the salt if you've got reasons that you can't uh, you know you want less salt in your diet you can lessen it but i always think um a decent amount of salt. So we've gone for, we're going for a one to two ratio. So we've gone for two cups of flour. Uh, I'm going to use one cup of water in the same cup, not in this one. And that. Shalimar says we use atta flour to make those type of flour. Yeah, atta flour is good, and atta flour is used for making chapatis, and 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 sometimes they use it for making. Uh, um, no, I actually think probably they wouldn't use atta to make naan bread. Um, atta is good, but it's a little short. I prefer a bread flour, stronger flour for this particular one. But this, I get lots of people coming onto my video. It's had over a million views now, and and, and I get a lot of comments on it. And people come on and say, oh, that's a chapati or, or that's a tortilla. It, it is and it isn't. You know, it's a bit like an English pancake and a crepe. They're all slightly different, but they all come from the same vein. I would say it's not a tortilla because a tortilla is usually pressed. So if you're do, talking about tortilla, when I was in Mexico anyway, when Michelle and I were in Mexico, they were generally pressed. And 99 times out of 100, most tortillas were made with masa flour. So it's completely different. You can't roll it out. You can't roll it and stretch it. It's a very different process. Flour tortillas, maybe, but realistically, let me get my water in there. Realistically, this is not a tortilla. I do have actually a video for tortillas, tortillas, but... Les Coops says, yay, manager on the live stream. Greetings from Malaysia at 10 p.m. Hi, Les Coops, Malaysia. And We've got, got, says, got a girl just next to us here. She's also stuck. She's from the UK, but she's actually from Indonesia. So we've got people all around the country, all around Istanbul that are stuck here. I'm just... BMMP says, I'm 4 o'clock in France. 4 o'clock in France. Bonsoir, bon après-midi. Good afternoon. Lino. Linnell. Okay, look, I'm just using a fork. A lot of people get their hands in and start doing this very early on. A lot of, I see a lot of baking shows, they get their hands in, they get very messy. Um, if you can save getting lots and lots of sort of like dough all over your hands, it makes the whole process a bit easier. So start the mixing with a fork or a spoon. We're going to get messy anyway, but I just think it's better to, to get the process. If you get in there early on with your hands, you definitely are going to get very messy. Now I can see already that my dough is a bit wet, okay? And that's probably because I topped the cup up right to the top with water, but maybe didn't go all the way with flour. And it's definitely because I didn't weigh my flour. 
Any good baker can make a loaf of bread without scales, but no good baker would make loaves of bread without scales. What I'm trying to say there is that if you want continuity, you do need to know the exact ratios and cups don't do it uh, because of a compacted cup, an uncompacted cup, cups don't do it. We're doing it today. I'm gonna to put another dessert spoon of flour in there. I wanna get the tackiness out of my, my bread flour. This is a bread flour. It's actually the baker's flour. And that's what the says. Hi, Steve Michelle. Lovely to have found bread flour. I can't find it around where we live in Istanbul. Oh, you can in Istanbul because you can actually talk with your local baker and they'll tell you. They're not allowed to sell it, but they often will tell you where you can buy it from. There are a lot of those little corner shops in Istanbul sell. Uh, they may not call it bread flour, but it definitely, it definitely is bread flour. So I've added a couple of spoons full of flour into this and it's starting to, to lose its tackiness. It's still quite, it's shaggy because we haven't worked the, worked the, the dough. I'm gonna have to get my hand in there. So I'll just pull the, the fork off. We're not gonna be using that anymore. And I am, you can't really see, but I am starting to push the dough into the flour that's in the corners and start to pull. I want that to, this still feels a bit wet to me. Still feels a bit wet. Temperatures can, can have quite a difference. It's a lovely warm day today. So I'm gonna put another dessert spoon of flour in there. So Annie for us says, I'm from Pakistan. Good oh, hello from Pakistan. Okay, well, I said, Love Pakistan. Yeah, I've not been there, so I can't say that yet, yeah. yeah. We are going to make a beautiful wrap, like a, a, a delicious wrap. We've got some nice cold cuts and things, but I can tell you what you can eat with this bread. This bread works really well um, if you like Nutella and butter, if you like um, a little more flour. See, it's still too wet. So if you're making along with me and your bread is, is a little bit too gummy, just keep adding a little bit of flour at a time. It's better to go flat, have a slightly wetter dough and work away from it than have a dry dough that you're adding um, water into. That doesn't work at all well. Les Coop says, being someone who's not used to the tackiness of the dough, I've learned in some YouTube videos to use chopsticks. I found it helps to make things easier. Well, that's what I just said, actually. I mean, a chopstick or a fork is one of the two things. I mean, a, ch a chopsticks are literally just Asian forks. So, um, uh, yes, you, you start off by um you start off by somebody just messaged me on whatsapp uh, rick did <laughs> what are you doing rick what did he say it's nothing uh, to do with the show <laughs> beautiful man rick you shouldn't be watching the telly you should be making bread um so yes it's getting that initial start you i always watch a lot of celebrity chefs and things and a lot of bakers and they always sort of start by just dipping their hands in and eventually this gunk you come up looking like a like a like an abominable snowman all the dough is stuck to your hands and it takes it just takes some of the pleasure out of getting on and making the bread um, because you you've got to get that off by the way tip for getting uh, getting the the flour off your hands uh, the dough off your hands is not to put it in water but to actually take a little bit of, of flour and just rub it onto your fingers and you'll find that the the dough will just fall away it'll just fall off your fingers if you put it under water it goes into a horrible paste and it just makes a mess so I'm getting close now I can feel this this is starting to feel like something I can handle so on the on the clean hand that I haven't done much touching with it's not sticking it's quite um still very shaggy but it's quite very soft you know very soft and buttery feeling not smooth yet we're going to work on that and she'll talk up a bit then she'll talk up say talk about up up a bit in the in the back 
You'll often find the hand that you've been mixing with, because it's got dough on it, will stick to the bread, whereas the hand that, that's clean will be easier to handle the dough. The reason I told you that is I have no idea. No idea. A little more flour. It's still a little bit, a little bit wallpaper pasty, a little bit sticky. Well, Mert says it won't, uh, just so you know, it won't taste the same unless you use your hand. No, uh, <laughs> there's, there's a psychological reason for that, Mert. It's, it's basically because when you do it by hand, you get more pleasure out of it. The pleasure goes into your brain. There are pleasure, pleasure receptors in your brain. And then you feel happier about what you've made and it tastes better. It probably doesn't actually taste any better than it would if we were mixing this with a dough hook in a bowl, to be honest. But there's something really nice about working with dough. I'm happy with this. I'm taking this out onto the counter. No, I'm not. It's probably the... Um, no, no, uh, yeah, I'm using my left hand. I'm doing it for the camera. It's the way you've got to stand, isn't it? <laughs> I've got to stand at this funny angle. I'm putting a, a little bit of flour, probably about a, a spoonful of flour, onto my counter now. This is quite soft and almost but still a little bit sticky, and that's the way I want it. I don't want too dry a dough. If the dough is too dry, it will be hard to roll. Same when you're making pasta, by the way, if you're doing it by hand and not in a, in a rolling press. This is actually about perfect for pasta. Um, now, I'm just going to knead the dough a little bit with the heel of my hand. I'm just pushing with the heel and stretching the gluten out. If you're doing this with um, all-purpose flour, you won't get quite such a smooth dough as you will with a bread flour, a stronger flour. So Rick says, can we have a quick recap of the ingredients as I was distracted at that bit? <laughs> Were you taking a photo, Rick? <laughs> the ingredients are super simple, Rick. We have got two beakers, cups, whatever you want to call them, of flour. So two of those, and I put one cup of water in and about uh, probably half a teaspoon of salt. Um, it. Jill Green says, I hate recipes in cups, they're so unreliable. They are, and that's what we were talking about at the beginning. You know, this I would normally really encourage people to always weigh. There's a reason, okay, I'll bang on a little bit for you about this. Um, lots of people will say, I've always made with cups and I never have a problem. That's fine until you pass that message, that recipe on to a friend and they use a different cup or a method because a cup is never accurate. Oh, I've said this so many times on my videos. Um, and bakers, when they talk about bread, they always talk about hydration ratios, which means basically the percentage of water to the percentage of dry goods. And you can only really calculate um, hydration ratios. You've seen me today, I'm adding a spoonful, a spoonful, and I'll get it just right. But if I'd weighed every single piece of flour I put in here, including the spoons, and weighed the water as well, water you can do by volume, but, but weigh the water as well, and I end up with the perfect amount, next time I don't have to bother adding spoonfuls in. I just go straight with a full weight of flour, straight with the full weight of water, and I'm away and I know I'm gonna get perfect bread. It can't go wrong, literally can't go wrong. And then if you pass that recipe on to someone, you see, if, the other thing is if you troubleshoot bread, say your loaf drops or it's too dense or the crumb's not right, or it collapses, um, it's too dry, there's so many things can go wrong with bread. You can only really blame the quantities of uh, liquid to flour that you may have used. And uh, if you're weighing it, and you know it's a safe, you know it's a tested recipe, it will never collapse. It will never be too dense. And uh, yeah, questions, any questions? Well, Annie Farrell says you're only using three ingredients for this dough. Very much so. This is the easiest bread that you'll ever get. It doesn't need any sugar or oil. If you add oil into it, you actually shorten the, the pastry somewhat. So you can end up with a tougher, a tougher bread, funny enough. People tend to think, oh, I'll add oil into it. It will become, you know, more supple. It, it actually doesn't, it makes it tougher. And I want a bread at the end of this that is, that sort of flops and it's, it's got some, some beautiful, like a, tor <laughs> like a tortilla. Um, tortillas, of course, are made with short flour, so they're made with 
um, masa, why is masa? Uh, corn flour. Not corn flour, actually, but a, t a type of corn flour. So you see I'm adding, I'm adding a little bit of, of flour every now and again. If I was using my, my weight measurements, I would not be adding this much extra flour into the dough. I would just go straight with it and start kneading. There would never be any need to add any additional dough. I could probably actually knead it on a clean surface. There'd be no stickiness to it at all. This is, this is there now. Jasmine says, thank you, Steve, for encouraging people to use a scale. Oh, scales. It's my, but one of my bugbears. They're so cheap, you can pick up scales for, for under $5 if you, if you really you want a, a reasonable set of scales. You can get them ordered online for probably not much more than about 5 or $6. And they will make you, the results of your, your, uh, your recipes. If you're used to a recipe, if you're always making flat, uh, a certain bread and you've been using cups for a long time, it's great. But the amount of times you hear people say, oh, my grandma used to make it this way and she wrote it down in a book and I copy it, but it never comes out the same way. It's because maybe grandma used to use a little china teacup and she's put two cups of flour, you know? Or maybe grandma used to, to pack it in hard into the cup and then tip it out. And then you got the recipe from her and you're using a different cup and you're putting it in light and your bread feels like a, like, like a bullet. Annie says, I don't use oil in my breads anymore. No, uh, I would not use oil in this particular recipe. There are some recipes where you want, you know, focaccia or something like that, you're gonna use a lot of olive oil in that. It's a different bread again. You, you, you bake it then with, we have no oven. The reason I'm making this bread is we have no oven. I want to stretch this out. Maybe I'll come this way. I'm stretching it out and folding it back. <laughs> it's harder that way. Um, stretching it out, folding it back, stretching it out, folding it back. And I'm just developing the bubble gum in it. You know, I'm developing that bubble gum texture. And it's a good workout if, if, if any of the, the ladies out there are looking for something to sort of work out those sort of upper arms, get rid of the old chicken wings. So let's go, so I've come across some videos that said the ratio of flour to water is five to three. Does it depend on the type of flour? Uh, no, it doesn't really depend on the type of flour. It can be tiny, tiny variations, uh, altitude, altitude. So if you're up high, it can change very slightly uh, to, towards the you know, baking at sea level, that can change very slightly, but no, um, it doesn't really make a lot of difference with the flour. Uh, the only thing I would say, um, quite a few people have said to me recently, I want to make this with a wholemeal flour. And I would say to that, make it with white flour first, taste it, see what it's like. If you make this with a whole, a complete wholemeal flour, you will end up with a very potentially quite a dry uh, flatbread. Um, to get a really nice wholemeal flour uh, flavor, you would want probably only about a third to a quarter of wholemeal to white flour. And then you can, you can mess with that ratio. You can increase it. I mean, how many people really like that sort of slightly stale, dry wholemeal flour that you can buy in shops sometimes? It's nice to have whole grains in a bread, so you can have a whole grain flour, which has got maybe some texture to it. But uh, whole meal flour, hmm. Michelle and I said, my husband was a professional baker for 26 years, started working in a Scottish bakery when he was Ooh, 14. Beautiful. And Rick says, I'm tempted to make this, but I'm intolerant to wheat. Can you think of a non-wheat alternative to the flour? Uh, yes, uh, uh, only thing there, Rick, is to look at my massa, uh, uh, get some massa flour, order it online. Um, you can actually make beautiful tortillas with massa. It's completely gluten-free, makes wonderful bread like this. Um, you can't need um, a, a, a gluten-free flour. It, you can, but it won't give you the same texture. You won't be able to roll it in the manner I'm going to show you in a minute because it won't stretch. It'll just keep tearing because there's no... I've got a video on my channel showing you what gluten is 
And it also, sh I, I, I take the gluten out of the flour and actually I separate the gluten from the flour and I do it with both bread flour and all purpose flour. So you can see how much of that gluten is actually inside the, uh, the different types of flour. When you talk about um, gluten-free flours, they have no gluten in at all. So you don't get any uh, stretchiness in the, in the flour at all. You've got to start adding um, xanthan gum and all sorts of um, additives to get the, the texture. So it can be done, but it's trickier. But I, would, I, I always think if people are completely intolerant to gluten, then, then tortillas are, are, are a good way to go. Masa is a beautiful flour. Um, to work with. But proper tortillas are sort of flattened with a press. So you make a little ball up and you flatten it and you get this perfect, some of the Indian breads are done this way as well. Um, particularly when you're making with atta, they quite often will use a press uh, because they're not the best breads to use. Now, no, sorry, they're not, not the best flours to okay, use. Annie says, how many times to knead the dough? John W. John W. Um, John, uh, now we don't, you only knead the dough once, but you knead it for a good 10 minutes. I'm not even sure how long I've been going, but I can feel there was a, there was a slight texture in this dough, a sort of slight grittiness you could feel as if there were little bits of dry flour in there. And after about five to 10 minutes, you will see that uh, they'll become a silkiness. So a beautiful, I, I don't know this flour well. I haven't, I've only used it once, but you get a, a nice sort of spring neck coming from there. The dough is a little bit on the sticky side, but I'm okay with that. So, Lisa Troll said oat flour is gluten-free and rice is also gluten-free. Well, many flours are gluten-free. Oat flour is gluten-free, rice flour is gluten-free, corn flour is gluten-free, but they don't do this. You can't, um, you can't make this sort of bread with an oat flour. Now I'm just going to cover that. Um, actually, that, <laughs> ah, that's stuck in there, good. What I might do, I made a much smaller one just as a test, so it fitted, it fitted up that little plate quite well, but this one is not going to, so I've got a, a damp towel here. Now what we're doing here, is just letting the, the liquid that's in the flour make the flour bloom. I call it blooming. It's, it's a, it can take 10, 15 minutes. The longer, the better, but we're only probably going to do it for a short while. Amy says hi. Hi, Amy. And, and what that's going to do is allow uh, the, the water to absorb fully into the flour. Let it bloom. And that way we get a slightly sm smoother dough again. Um, and we get... Uh, um, better elasticity when we start to roll this out. So any questions? Well, uh, Kevin Island says pizza dough needs oil. So Chris Gartner's coming with pizza dough doesn't need oil. I no. much prefer it without oil. Um, pizza yes. dough, Ke Ke Kev, was it? Uh, yes. Pizza dough does not need oil. You don't, no you don't normally put oil into a pizza dough. Um, uh, you, you, you can, but the more oil you put in, and when I used, when I was in Sicily, and I used to go to, I was learning with a, a guy who made a master pizza maker there. They don't use oil in the crust. Um, they sometimes use oil, like I might do, just drizzle the oil over the over the um, over the dough just to stop it from drying out. But they don't use oil in in the crust. Sometimes they drizzle olive oil over the pizza when it's ready to be made. But if you put it into the dough, you'll end up with a, a drier bread, believe it or not. So Annie says oat flour is good in bread dough, but you can't have more than about 10%. Oatmeal, uh, oat yeah. Oatmeal ground up into a flour is something a lot of Sicilian pizza makers make. Not all of them, so don't, bag on me but I met when we were in Sicily quite a few who use oatmeal in their pizza dough and it was delicious what it really made up a, a really lovely dough but they only use a tiny amount what was the what was the pen 10%. yeah 10 percent is probably about spot on 
And what it does, it adds, the reason you use a small amount is because it doesn't really add anything to the quality of the dough you're, you're doing, but it adds a nuttiness to the, the pizza crust, which is quite nice. And uh, I would say that's a great thing to do, but you do have to start then with a bread flour. You can't start with a, an already shortened flour, like an all-purpose or plain flour. You've got to start with a good strong flour because you're adding um, a gluten-free flour into that. And that's, that's, you, you, you can't do that if it's already got very limited gluten in it. You'll end up with a, a, a dough. Gosh, I'm out of breath. You'll end up with a dough. And that's, this out of breath is not because of that. I often get like this when I'm doing a live show, don't I? Because I, yeah. anxiety. So Amy <laughs> says, how are you and Michelle? Very We're very well. well, yeah. And Stuart said, what's your plan for bread to make and eat? Now I know who Stuart is. <laughs> Stuart, this bread I love. This bread, if you, you get to make this, mate, if you just make this at home, it really is so easy. It's so versatile. But... Um, I like making uh, sourdough uh, breads with my sourdough starter. I love my sourdough baguettes. They, they make, I, I quite like making baguettes. I've got some nice baguette trays back home and I love to make a baguette. Uh, I like when we used to live in France, the uh, um, rustic baguettes with the sort of pointed ends, lovely lots of crust on them. I like making that sort of dough, but you do need to have a lot of steam in your oven. We haven't got an oven here, so I can't make that. Um, I like to make, uh, my sourdough fruit loaf. That's a lovely, lovely bread. And it's like, it's like, it's almost like a, uh, like a chestnut when it's cooked because you cook it at such high temperatures that you have a really thick, dark crust on it. It's, it's beautiful. One of my favorite breads, uh, baguettes maybe. And this one, um, this one is great because uh, I've made it many times for people when we've met with them. And I get people involved in making it and sort of take it. And they're always surprised how good this tastes. And it's gluten, uh, it's yeast free. Um, I sometimes wonder whether I have a bit of an intolerance to, to yeast. Um, if, you, if you've not tried it before, give this a try. Were you gonna say another um, one? Yeah, I was sorry, I was just doing something there. So I've just put the, the bread playlist on there. Just put a link to the bread playlist. Yeah, there's- All of those breads that you were talking about. Okay, there's a playlist on the channel of different breads that, that, I, that I've made. Um, so Chris said a good way to incorporate oats into a bread dough is to make an actual porridge and fold it in after the initial kneading stage makes a very soft dough, need to lower the hydration however. Yes, we, we've talked about hydration in other videos, I, I, it's super important if, you're, if you bake bread all the time, hydration baking is, is the way to go and that's all about percentages and you need scales to do it and if you want to become a really good bread baker, you need to use scales. Because if you find a cookbook that, tell, that tells you um, how to make bread and it hasn't got the weights and measures in it, that cookbook is, is close to worthless to you. So um, uh, hydration levels are very important. Now, if you did that with the oatmeal wet like that, you couldn't do this with that because the oatmeal then is a full full oatmeal and um, we're talking about and I think the person before was talking about oat flour so it's oatmeal that's been ground to a very fine flour it's it's got a similar texture to this flour here maybe a tiny bit coarser and uh, it's just a flavor really so you can sorry Rick says I uh, just looked up massa flour on Amazon and it listed pre-cooked white maize flour is that the same thing um pre-cooked if they're talking about nixtamalized uh it should say massa, Rick. It should say massa flour. If it says massa and it says it's from tortillas, then yes, it's... I've actually got a video if you want to make your own massa, but you'd have to buy corn and you can buy uh, corn and make it yourself. It's a little more complex, but it's very uh, enjoyable to do. And you can actually buy animal feed corn <laughs> if you trust the supplier. Um, and it's not particularly GM modified corn but you can make masso and that's extremely uh it's fulfilling to make it's delicious but you can buy masso flour um i'm not sure what they mean by pre-cooked if they're talking about nixmalized which is the process of, uh, of preparing masso then yes that's fine but i wouldn't call that pre-cooked so be careful with that just want masso flour normal masso should be good 
So uh, Shalimar says, we have a recipe that makes 50 pitters. Takes two people, one to form the pitters and one to watch the oven broiler. Yeah, well, again, we we often make this as, as a pair, Michelle and I, where one of us will sort of um, prep them and roll them out. I tend to roll them, Michelle will cook them, um, and then you've got them ready. And actually, as we do them, you'll see, you see this counter, it's going to be a bit tricky for me to roll because I've got this tiny little rolling pin and I've got this edge. So you'll see, as I cook them, you can stack them up and they stay warm for ages, for Oh, good 20 minutes, 40 minutes, they'll stay warm just on the side, which is quite amazing. Um, so Annette Green says, can we use this dough for pierogies? Pierogies, uh, I've got to check. Pierogies sounds familiar, but um, Michelle wants me to put my glasses on and have a little read or something. Little dumplings, filled dumplings. So. Um, no. No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say this is the right dough for that. That looks to me to me a bit like a rice flour dough. Um, it says it's with um, dough. It's the flour, eggs, water. So it's an egg dough. Probably it's a pasta. Mm -hmm. It's a pasta it dough. A pasta dough yeah. So once you add eggs into your into your dough, um, you very much change. You you shorten the dough basically. You shorten the flour. Um, so that's why quite often with things like pierogies and anything that's made along those lines, they're quite often used, um, um, what is the flour that they use? Uh, quite often see it in pasta, that, that flour, the name. Flour. Yeah, not, not a semolina, there's another, there's another flour. It's an older grain, a more ancient grain. And you can use that in those flours because you don't need the strong, uh, by the way, a, a, a we talk. You're going to learn all sorts of things today, if if I can empty this this skull of some of my information and it sort of sinks in. Um, uh, the only difference really between all-purpose flour or plain flour and bread flour is the amount of um, gluten proteins that are in there, or glutenin and gliadin proteins that are in there. And really, it's about winter flours and spring flours, or first crops and second crops. I think it is late crops produce the higher uh, protein content. So the, 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 the crops that are actually um, harvested later in the year, they have a, they've been through the summer, they have a higher level of protein in them. So the flour is exactly the same. It's just when it's harvest, harvested. Durham, Durham. Durham flour. Yeah, Durham flour is a common one. Uh, yes, Cooper's just told us. And Moon Lady said, if no yeast is used, why let it rest? Uh, what I, if you weren't listening just before, maybe you've just come in, it's to do with letting, and it's the same even if you use a batter for pancakes or if you're using a, um, uh, a simple flour like this, you're letting the uh, flour bloom. So you're letting the water. Uh, you imagine the flour, each flour molecule that's in there has been damped now by the process of mixing and now we're just allowing it to sort of puff back up again and get sort of like letting it relax. It's not important. If you wanted to, we could go straight ahead with this. But you will notice as you handle this in a moment's time, it just feels a bit silkier. The stretch is a little bit nicer. And if you're, if you're making, if you've ever made uh, pancakes or crepes, even if they're American style pancakes. Um, and you just said, I just have pancakes. <laughs> uh, you, always, you, you always get better results if you let that batter sit for a while. Um, and it's purely, again, just allowing the, the flour itself to bloom. I call it blooming. I'm not sure what the proper term is. That's what I've always called it. I'm covered in, in uh, I might give my hands a little wash because I've got some a lot of dry, a lot of dry flour on my hands. Yeah, there's a lot of factors, but generally, I think your your bread flowers, and you're right, just confirming for me there. It's I think it's the the winter flowers um, have generally have a higher protein content in them. And Les Scoop says, is super fine flour the same as all peppers flour? Super fine flour is generally a bread flour, uh, sorry, cake flour. Um, no, it's not the fineness of, of the flour and how it's, how it's actually uh, processed, but it's the actual, the, the, the grains in which, uh, the, in which are being used. So no, to answer that in simple terms. Uh, generally, 
I think when you you hear super fine, I could be wrong on this, um, no reason to, to, to feel that I'm correct. I think super fine flowers are generally either, uh, the Italians call it double zero, triple zero. The, Somebody else is just talking about Jill uh, Green says uh, double zero is what I've seen for pasta. Yes, it's generally used for pastas. It can also be used for um, certain biscuits and cakes and things can be used with certain super fine. But bread flour is generally not classified as super fine, to my knowledge. Now, if I if somebody wants to correct me on that, I'm happy to to um, learn. Just in a quick uh, Google, it says it's a fine texture and makes it ideal for delicate cake baking. Yeah, that's my understanding of super fine. Everyone sort of says to me, because I talk about all purpose flour, some countries it's called plain flour. I don't know what it's called in your country, but you know, it basically means all purpose flour is a flour that can be used for many purposes from biscuits and technically could be used for bread as well, but it's not as good for bread. So now, it hasn't risen. Now, if you'd had yeast in that, you'd expect it to be puffing up beautifully. We're not worried about it puffing up, but what we are interested in is this beautiful elastic texture that's now in our, in our bread. And that is perfect now for making our, you see, the way clean from the bowl. So it shouldn't be too sticky by now. You should be able to handle it without it getting onto your, onto your clothing. Sorry, am I knocking that against my microphone? So you should be able to handle that without it sticking to you. It'll stick a little bit, but it won't stick perhaps as much <laughs> as my only counter. This is my, it's so frustrating to be cooking in a place with such a small counter. Now, if you want to divide this up, I think this is going to make, by the way, probably about four decent flatbreads. So you can double the recipe or, and I've got nothing to sort of measure this out. So I'm just going to split it in two, uh, just um, roll it together again. And then I'm just going to split it in two. I'm going with something about, oh, what? I got told off once for calling it a large golf ball, but you know, when I, this is actually bigger than what I would ordinarily make, but Michelle and I fancy a, a proper a proper wrap. So, what size would you call that? I mean, if you say uh, if you say a small, I know a golf ball is an exact size, but if you say a, a golf ball size and people underdo it, they're going to end up with something too small. And if they if you say large golf ball, you think golf ball but a bit bigger, you know. So yay sort of big probably about two inches in diameter that's what i've got here you could easily actually if you want smaller breads this would make eight so you, yeah i mean we'll talk about frying pans this is probably ikea again it's not the best you can tell it's a tinny old frying pan cheapy thing not ideal for what we're doing and i am going to probably get limited uh, I'm probably going to get limited quality results out of this, so please forgive me. That's my excuse anyway. A, a very thick based frying pan or a skillet or a car frying pan makes beautiful flatbreads. Um, even if you're doing them outdoors on a barbecue or when we were traveling around Australia, we would do them inside the Dutch oven. Uh, you'll get much better heat dispersion on a thick based pan. On this thing, wherever the flame hits, it gets hot. And the heat doesn't ever really fully fit on the bottom. It doesn't sort of disperse across the pan. So you don't get quite such good results. Now that's fine for some things. Annette Green says baseball, talking of the size. No. And the Patrol that's about the size of a tennis ball. No, it's, it's it, yeah, it's... It, but you're, you're both sort of right. I mean, it's it's a little bit small for a baseball. It's a little bit uh, it's a little bit small for a tennis ball. Um, I, actually, these are probably a little bit bigger than I wanted. But we'll we'll try the first one. I can always break it down if it. And if uh, Jill Green says, "I'm waiting to see how you roll them on that counter." No. Yeah, well, that's <laughs> I love that. That'll be easy. I won't have any. I won't have any issues with that. I'm going to pop those in the in the pan, and I am. What I tend to do, who said that, Jill? Um, yes. What I tend to do, if this is damp enough, I'll just cover those up. I've got my handy dandy little rolling pin here and you don't need anything uh, any bigger than that really. Although I do like a proper size rolling pin, but this'll do it. Sorry, I keep on the 
market. That was from the market. You might have seen in a video I went and bought this little thing. I like a little rolling pin like this because it can, it's great for pasta because you can you can roll the pasta over the pin and and get an extra thin pasta. Okay, well, it's a billiard ball maybe from BC. Yes, <laughs> it is about the size of a billiard ball. Got it. <laughs> Spot on. <laughs> so it's about uh, about the size of possibly an eight ball, maybe a tiny bit smaller. I don't know. If I had scales, I could weigh it for you and tell you, couldn't I? Thomas May says, yay, cooking live, I love it. So a little bit of flour on our counter, just dust it down. And now I've messed up because I'm going to have to have a plate. Another one? Well, we haven't got a lot of plates. <laughs> I need this plate because I'm going to want to um, warm up this this frying pan what the dough's in so i need to take those out of there it's all fun and games isn't it so i'm just making four mainly because michelle somebody said to me how could you store these and have them you know later these take so little time to make obviously i'm taking more time to make them today that i prefer to make them fresh but if you're going to store these at all the best way to store these i have found is to freeze them once they're done once they're cooked you can actually slightly undercook them but but you can fully cook them and then just put them into a, um, a plastic wrap or a ziploc bag and freeze them that's the best way to store them and then when you want to have them they heat up very quickly or you can actually just let them defrost naturally and you'll be you'll you Fresh is best, you know, fresh is, fresh is uh, always going to create a, a better result. And they don't take that long to, to make really, it's just taking... No, I can, I, I can, I'm yakking to you and doing this, that and the other. This is taking a bit longer than, than would, would normally do. So, where's the yellow cloth? It's on top of the fridge, but next to the other side. On top of our fridge, our other working counter. Got that all a bit doughy now. So. Yeah, Annie says, how about in a cake tin if you don't have a freezer? Um, Just over, overnight you put it into a tin? Uh, well, you can keep them, if you keep them overnight in any tin or anything like a Tupperware, they never taste as good. They just won't taste as good. Okay, let's see, how am I gonna do this and you guys can see? I think might have to get Michelle to bring the, uh, the camera in. Come over here, Michelle, it, say hello. It could all go disastrously wrong now. <laughs> she drops the camera, it all goes pear-shaped. It's our fault, not mine. I'm gonna show you how to roll these out. So just let's unclip that I there. Remember. You're good? Yeah, I have my instructions. So, oh, I've already started. So I've got a little bit of flour, my nice little soft dough there. It's all ready. Look over here, stop looking at the computer. I'm just checking <laughs> the it right, but it's not there yet. It doesn't yes, matter, okay, you I'm don't know that's... Right. So rather than use the center of the roll pin like this, and I do this even when I haven't, you can get a little further away, I think that might be better. So rather than using the center of the rolling pin like this, I use, always use the edge and you roll, the dough but don't be tempted to roll over the edge that pinches this edge thin so we give this a little turn roll a little turn roll and all you're going to do is just come in a bit closer on that one no don't particularly need to i've got a little bit sticky so i'm going <laughs> to pop that down now so we're just rolling and, and turning the um turning it round as we go i need more flour i underdone the flour because some people say to me when I put a little flour that's not a little bit of flour I like a good amount of flour so it turns around nicely and I only need to use the edge of my rolling pin sorry about the clanks and the banks and the bangs so as you spin it you'll get your rolled you'll get your round shape now Go on. Did you want to get that pan on to make it stand at heat? Oh, yeah, I forgot about it. Look, we'll, we'll, we'll get there. Yeah. So let your bread just rest for a minute because it wants to shrink back in. You can pop that back up there now, Michelle, I think. Okay. Sorry to make you dizzy. There we go. So don't underflower your countertop. I think that's what I should have said there. Uh, don't, don't 
pay attention to comments on YouTube. You know, that's not a dusting, that's too much flour. I prefer a little more flour and um, I haven't done this for a little while. So what have we got there? We've got something that feels a little bit like probably about eighth of an inch. I don't know what an inch is nowadays, maybe about two millimeters, three millimeters thick. Whoops. Put the gas stove on. Whoa. Ben was laughing at you, struggling to find places to store even a cloth. Even a cloth, Ben. <laughs> I've got no space here at all. I'm happy with that. That is, um, it feels a bit like a wet dishcloth, you know, but it doesn't stick to your hands at all. You've got a beautiful bread. Let it rest. Now, if you want, you can actually make the next one and the next one, and you can stack them up. If there's a decent amount of flour on the surface of the bread, they won't stick. But you like, I like to rest them because the, with glutinous flour, it wants to shrink back. Yeah, so. The scooter, look at that flour circle. <laughs> and Stephen Mangan, Mangan says, have you tried the Turkish Gosma yet? My favourite is the potato and spinach feeling. Very easy to make, but I use a longer rolling pin than the one you're using. <laughs> I can't because look, if I roll on, on this counter, what, it's got a bull nose lip on it. So what, I can only use, this, I, I thought when I got this back, I thought, oh, I'm not going to be able to roll anywhere because, you know, but I can if I just about work, work in one space. We made Gosleme, didn't we? We made Gosleme. Did we do it on a video? I'm just going to see if I can find it. We've possibly done Turkish Gosleme before when we were in Perth. Uh, um, so I'm heating up my pan. This pan won't heat like a, like a, like a good thick bottom pan. It won't heat nicely. So I really actually want to get it all hot. So I'm going to let it get pretty hot so even the sides up here were too hot to handle because next thing when we talk about leavening we're doing this without a yeast so we haven't got a leaven agent in there we haven't got bicarbonate of soda or baking soda and we haven't got yeast in there the only leavening agent we've got in this flour is water and as the water heats up it releases it turns into into steam and that's what allows your bread to rise so if, if this goes well, it'll puff up. If it went perfectly, if this was a hot pan, and it probably won't, it will puff up into a nice big ball. But we'll probably just get smaller bubbles, but it'll, it'll be fine for what we're doing. If you're doing this with a good solid-based pan, you, sh you can actually get it to puff up into almost like a great big sort of dome. And that's the, the steam inside the bread. You'll only get that if you follow these instructions, by the way. You've got to actually make sure you cook in a certain manner so um, splash a little bit of water in there mm, still not hot enough i want it hotter i want to get the best results for you um i might even make that a little thinner so let's try the first one we can only make mistakes we can only go wrong so i'm just going to drop it in the pan and what i'm going to do what I sometimes do is just knock the pan, just to release it, um, bang the side of the pan, or you can tap it with a, a spoon. I don't want it to be in that pan very long, and you could flip it over like a pancake. I won't do that. I do do it sometimes, but I don't want to make a fool of myself. You don't want it in there too long before you turn it over. And the reason we've turned it over, if you can see, this side has just started to crust. There's just a little bit of a crustacean on there. And now we're doing the other side, we're sealing, a bit like you would do a steak. We're sealing the pastry on both sides to trap the moisture in. If we leave it on one side too long, all the moisture will come out and you'll end up with a dry bread. So those of you that have ever done this and find it too dry, that is the reason. You, you've, you've basically, you haven't had your pan, your pan hot enough and maybe you haven't turned it to seal both sides first off. Now, when we've got both sides sealed, we turn that over. So I've just flipped it over. You can just see some little dimples starting to appear on the surface. Now we're gonna see a delamination of the two, the, two, the two sides of the bread. So I'm just pushing. I like to push it with a spatula. I've only got a spoon. <laughs> so I'm just gently pushing the bread together. 
And what this is, just encouraging it to delaminate a little bit. And what I, what I, this is where I want to cook the bread. I can probably do this in just two turns if, if it goes well. Maybe not with this pan. You might want to watch it. We'll make a little playlist. Now, I don't know if I can show you. I might just quickly grab that. Now my hands. Come over here. Can you see that starting to, to puff up? So it's getting a nice little puff there. Do you, could you grab this off me, Michelle? Because I've made the point of bringing that over. And now... Or you can just hold it there a moment. Okay. Just, just come right now, close, close in. Turn it over. See, you've got almost like a, you've got almost like a, a pancake dippling on there now, and you can see the bread is starting to puff up. There's air inside there, and this pan is probably hot enough. So there's a springiness. Can you see? It's, it's, it's split down the middle. Absolutely perfect. This is going fine. I'm quite happy with this. I'm just pushing it with my IKEA spoon. You can put it back over there now, Michelle. I might have a plate. I might have a plate. I've got another one. So don't overcook it. Don't overcook it. Put your bread, this little flat bread. Whoops, I should have turned that that way. Put it onto a plate. If you want to, you could cover this. This is where Michelle and I working together often works well. You can cover this with a very damp, not, not a, sorry, not a, a very damp, not too damp cloth. I don't tend to. We're just going to leave that there and I will come over here. Oh, grab my next little piece of bread. Now I'm gonna do a second one just to show you um, to show you the results when you stack them. So Thomas May says, easy flip there. <laughs> and then Chris Hereford says, hi Steve Michelle, sorry I'm late. No worries, Chris. And Leslie Cook says, Steve, can you do a short tutorial on pan flipping? <laughs> I've, I've done. You did that on uh, making pancakes. Probably not a, an exact tutorial on pan flipping. No, not pan flipping. Uh, sorry, on flipping. Um, Confidence. It's just it's just about having the confidence to uh, not be afraid to chuck it up there and always, you know, get the odd one fall on the floor. And Ben S says that looks pretty impressive for such simple ingredients. It is, and also the flavour. It's all to do again with the quality of your flour. But if you get good quality bread flour, like I've got here in Turkey, this beautiful Turkish bread flour, the flavours will be good. I haven't under seasoned it. I haven't, um, so in other words, I put enough salt in it to, to bring out the, the flavors. We've caramelized it as we've cooked it in the pan. Um, you don't need to flip it. I'm doing that because it's a little bit dry. The, the surface, the counter is a little a bit uh, under floured. It's not the best counter. I haven't had a Gosleme, Gosleme here in Turkey yet, and that's actually something we've got to look forward to when this ridiculous thing stops and we can get out and enjoy the Turkish food. So I've got a nice, again, a nice round piece of dough there. That's gonna go into my pan, a little shake just to stop it from sticking. Searing one side, we're searing one side. You can possibly see it, well, you can't, maybe you can hear, but it's sliding around there. So we're not doing it too much. I could flip it over, but then I'll make a mess. No, it has flipped. Again, just a little discoloration on the flour, on the surface of the bread. Sealed it. So seal two sides of your bread, of your your, your dough. You can feel when it's, when it's sealed because you can sort of slide it around. Dare I flip it one more time? Will I mess it up? Okay, so we flip it over onto this side. The pan should be getting hot now. 
And now I can gently start to push with the back of my spoon. Ikea is destroying Airbnbs. Same old junk in every single place we stay in nowadays. Not the best quality stuff, um, but it'll do, it'll do. So I'm just, I'm just pushing the, the back of the spatula over the bread just to get good contact and I'm expecting on the back of this now to, for the bubbles to start coming up and then you get that lovely little dimpling that you, you like to see on, on any flatbread. I like to see on a flatbread. Susan says maybe when this thing stops you might make it down this way. Um, Ephesus is just up the road and definitely worth a visit. It, a lot would depend when it stops, but we would like to do a, a little bit of touring around and see some other beautiful parts. Um, I can't see us not doing it, but I'm not going to say, you know, there's so many uncertainties at the moment. You see, even when I flip the pan, the pan cools down because it's not thick enough to, to absorb the heat. So that's why you want a thick bottom pan. Showing you here, you can do it with a thin pan, but it's not as good. This time I'm not flipping it. Got my little dimples in the surface of the bread. It's not doing me any favors to keep moving around like this because I'm cooling down. Now I want that delamination. I want that uh, big bubble to appear in the center of the bread. So I get a pocket inside it. Rena Sue said, great flip. Question about flour. I have both semolina and both flour. Can I use them blended or can I use just the semolina? No, you can't use semolina flour to make this sort of bread because it will be, semolina on its own won't have any, uh, that's, that won't have the gluten and it won't stretch out. Uh, you can add a little semolina uh, in if you want to, and that's mainly for flavor. It's not gonna add anything great to the texture of the, of the flour itself. I think I might have let the heat escape from this one because it hasn't puffed up. So let's just flip it over. Yes, and you even when you do tortillas, uh, you can. They like to delaminate the tortillas, so they quite often when you're seeing them making tortillas, they're flying, frying the actual bread. They quite often push them just to sort of get the the thing. This one is not. Oh yes, it's start now. It's starting to puff out, and what you can do is sort of push the, air, the the steam. It's not air; it's steam. You can push it through the bread, and it allows it to make that beautiful, almost like a pea pocket. Um, this one puffing up nicely now. Yes, and if you want to actually have a garlic butter, okay, that'll do. We're done. So if you want to make this into something like a garlic naan, you know, a garlic bread, just get a little butter. Now get a little knob of butter and just rub it over the surface. I might even do that with just to show you. Uh, Chris Harrison says, fancy flipping their sleeve. You are good at it. So if you wanted to, this is, this is sort of local butter. You could actually just rub the butter over the surface of the bread and if you made a little garlic butter, now I'm getting messy, aren't I? Um, we've done this when we bought uh, flat plates and they're not they're a bit dry. Yeah, if I get, sometimes if you buy, if, you buy, if you're used to having flatbreads in those packets of eight that come in the supermarket, make these because you will never go back. Because every time you get those from the supermarket, you'll think, hmm, it's got no flavor. You know, if the bread itself doesn't stand on its own, you know, if the bread itself is not, this is lovely and soft. It's like a tortilla, it makes a great wrap. If it doesn't, if it doesn't smell like that, oh, the smell is so good. If it doesn't smell, it doesn't stand on its own. You could eat that just by itself and enjoy it. If it doesn't do that, it ain't any good. And most of those wraps you buy in the supermarket, they, if you eat them straight like that, they just taste like a piece of old cardboard. So it's what you put in them that makes them half decent. So, I won't cook the other two just yet. What I will do... Venice says, look delicious. If I get my dear wife, Michelle, to bring over a plate of salads that she's prepared, show them, Michelle, show them what we've got. What we've got, we've got to cut the tomato, yeah? Got to cut the tomato. 
Okay. So we have over here, just pull it off. I'm just getting it out of the wrapping. <laughs> so we've got some beautiful, some sliced eggs, some prosciutto, some lovely cheese that we bought here, a little bit of uh, diced up carrot, some salami, and some gorgeous feta cheese. What I would probably do. You need to do that again and just tip the plate down a little bit because it was a bit flat. Okay. Sorry, just seeing that. <laughs> I don't want it to fall off, but it's a, it's a lovely little sort of salad like a little summer salad with some nice coddled eggs there um coddled eggs coddled eggs now somebody two people maybe even three people last week said about my rubbishy old ikea knife which has been used to open a pot of paint they said to me about sharpening or sharpening it on the back of a plate now stupidly i should know that because i've done it before but your brain doesn't always work but you see on the back of a, a lot of glazed plates, they have an area that's not glazed where it's been in the kiln. And that area there is, is not bad to put a little bit of an edge back on your knife. The problem is it's, it's an Ikea knife and it's got no real good quality metal in it. So it'll be, it'll blunt, it blunts again very quickly. Or a cu cup, anything that's glazed. Um, I'm just going to cut this a little bit of onion, a little onion. Which way would you slice that? That way, I think. Yeah. So I'm just going to slice a little tomato. So you see, it's slicing okay. Slicing okay. Can you see that from there? Probably can. So I've got some nice little uh, half moons of tomato, tomato. I've got myself one of these lovely soft breads, lovely and flat. I'll pop my shells somewhere. No, the pan's got water in it. <laughs> so we pop that there. I'm going to put a little bit of this beautiful ham inside. I'm going to put a little bit of carrot, a little bit of salad, some, a couple of pieces of, don't overfill it. If you overfill them, they'll just end up, well, you can if you want, but they'll end up all over the plate. I've got some feta cheese. And I will take, I'll make another one of these later on, take a photograph and put it up on Instagram and Facebook so people can see how beautiful these look. They say if you drip a little clarified butter over the bread while it's in the pan, it enhance, enhances the taste. It, any fats can enhance the taste, yes. A clarified butter, that's somebody thinking about uh, your Indian um, breads, that's quite often done. I don't, you don't, doesn't need bread. Try When you, people say to me, oh, can I make this with whole meal, meal flour? Should I put butter on it? I say, try it like this first and then add it and decide for yourself if it improves it. You can do with a nice dressing, you've got some mayo, you want some mayo in that? A little bit of mayonnaise might be quite nice. Playlist for seven, Steve, I love bread and salad, yum. So I've got a little tiny drizzle of mayonnaise in there, not too much. Rick says that looks so good, I'm getting hungry, hungry now. Tip on rolling tortillas or wraps. People try to roll them from the end. Fold them in half first. So fold it in half and then do your rolling. And that way everything will stay in nice and tight. <laughs> and here is my delicious. And there's no questions now, he's taken a bite, nothing to say. <laughs> Thomas May said, good. <laughs> oh, I'm so hungry. Uh, we haven't eaten since breakfast, it's six o'clock. Because I was waiting to enjoy this with you guys. And Chris says, sure that makes complete sense. Hmm, what does? I don't know, maybe the um, rolling of it? Stuart's giving you a round of applause. Ben says, quick, let's give Steve lots of questions now. Yeah. Playlist Wolf hit, says, hit, hit the thumbs up while you do. Yes, hit the thumbs up. Playlist Wolf says, if you put lemon juice over the salad, it gives it a real good taste to it. Mmm, yeah, lemon juice. Have you got any lemons? <laughs> I might even put a bit of olive oil in there. What would you put in this? Well, Shalimar Perfume says, love scrambled eggs in flatbread, egg salad and lettuce, etc. Egg salad. A little bit of chicken curry. I like a bit of avocado, that would be nice. A bit of avocado. Come on. The kids love peanut butter. 
Whoever would have the peanut banana and peanut butter. Banana and peanut butter, Michelle would love. That would be one of her go-to. So you can pretty much anything you can do with a sandwich, Coleslaw you can do with this. Annie. Another great thing, if you've got, if you've made a few of these in the morning and you want to use them in the afternoon, so you make a batch of maybe six, eight, ten. If you've got a family, get them involved, get the kids in the kitchen and just get somebody rolling them, somebody baking them, somebody frying them, sorry. Once you've, um, let's turn that so you can see it a little better. If you want to reuse these this evening, you can actually make a beautiful quesadilla with this. Uh, so basically it's like a, a sandwich. Uh, you can put your cheeses and your, your savouries inside or your sweets, and then you can just reheat it in the pan. And if you use a, a really nice mozzarella or a strong um, sharp cheese, uh, maybe some uh, anchovies in there, a little bit of um, capers, make it nice and thick so it starts to ooze out the center and then cut it into quarters so they're like little sandwiches. Quesadillas made with these, they're so, so delicious. So, um, Stuart says French dressing and cold beer. Absolutely. Um, Rina C says you deserve that by yum, now it's your turn Michelle, I'll get in mine soon. Uh, Rick Man Man says tuna and mayo. Mmm. Beast of Troll says Nutella and banana. Sorry, I'm so hungry. <laughs> Jacko Con says, whenever I try good. to roll dough out with the rolling pin, it always sticks. I have more flour than this cardboard. I give up. Um, you're overdoing the flour. If you get that texture, if you watch when I was making this, you get to a point where it's not sticking to a clean hand. You've got it right. If you go too far, you're going to end up with that cardboardy texture. Uh, the longer you actually let that sit, that that you let that dough develop as well, as I say, I would have preferred to give it sort of 40 minutes to an hour to let it, the more supple the final product's going to be. I mean, I'm quite happy with these. These actually, you could, you could I'll make more for Michelle, but I'll just tear this one in half so you can see. Um, you, could, you could probably delaminate uh, this. Let's see if we can on this one. No, I haven't. It wasn't hot enough the pan but you should be able to delaminate the center and almost you see in there so you can almost make pita pockets out of this you know so you could actually fill it up with grated cheese and avocado and all sorts of things but you need a hot pan to get good delamination good little pockets inside so you can make pita pockets you could go you know go all mexican and um so stephen manga says get some nah Esquisi, where your next shop is the best dressing. Okay, I didn't even put, I, I sliced up the tomato, I didn't put any in. Tomatoes just give you a nice little extra moisture in there as well. Um, I probably would have just put the feta cheese in and sprinkled a little bit of beautiful, nice French salt, maybe, um, you know, maybe a little Himalayan salt if that's what you like. What else, any other good suggestions? Um, Rick said about a mayo, tuna mayo. Tuna mayo works really well with this. Michelle would love that. She'd probably even drop a few peanuts in there as well, just to add a little crunch, a little bit of texture, a little bit of salt and seasoning into it. Um, Any suggestion of coleslaw and chicken sounds? Coleslaw and chicken, that would be absolutely dis delicious. Jubilee chicken. Uh, is it called Jubilee chicken? Coronation. That's with the coronation chicken. Well, you know the coronation chicken, which is like a little curry Peanut chicken? And bacon. Mm. Yeah. The, if you want, a, these these make really good bacon and egg sandwiches. So if you want, I've just done the put the quesadilla recipe up, which is uh, yeah. breakfast quesadilla we made. If you've got good bacon, you fry it, pop an egg in there. Just you know, I've got, not got one now. So Stephen says that um, salad dressing is made from pomegranate juice. Yeah, oh, I love the pomegranate molasses. Mm -hmm. Pomegranate. We we actually travelled for about a year on this five year journey of ours with with a bottle of pomegranate molasses. And, and drizzled it onto different salad dressings that we had. So, Chris me. Herifer says you're giving us an appetite, Steve. Well, you know what to do. You can you can make this any time. If you if a lot of people have been saying to me in different parts of the world, there's a big run on yeast and nobody can get yeast. You don't need yeast for this bread, and it may not be sort of flat white sort of sliced bread, but you can do anything with this bread that you can do with a sliced bread. You can. 
Um, the other day when I made some just to test whether it was going to be okay, I had to see if this, this bread was comfortable for me to use. We yeah. just, flour, sorry. <laughs> um, we just had it and dipped it into our soup. We were just dipping it into the soup, scooping it up and sort of eating it. Um, yeah. So Skeeter Lewis says it looks delicious. Mm. Um, Shalimar says make enchiladas with them. Make enchiladas. And Eric Nathan said, I would go savoury with meat, um, meat and maybe some veggies or sweet milk chocolate with bananas and walnuts. That sounds delicious. Um, you can even make a beautiful steak. You know, if you if you get a nice piece of um, T-bone or sirloin steak and just slice it and pop it in, lay it in here with a, a again with a salad, maybe a lovely dressing. Um, it, it'll all drip out, you know, all the juices will drip out, but it'd be lovely. Pulled pork would be great with this, lovely pulled pork. Sausage? Uh, we've, we've done it many times with just uh, snags, as we call them, the sausages on the barbie. So if you make these at barbecue time, sorry, I've got a bit of carrot in my mouth. If you make these at barbecue time, you can actually just roll a sausage inside them, a bit of mustard, a bit of mayo, whatever you like inside there, uh, some onions even if you like onions, and you can just roll it up. And you've got a really easy sort of hot dog that you can sort of just chew on because it, it holds it all together. Yeah, it might drip out the end, but if you sort of pinch, if you pinch down on the end with your middle and ring finger, you can just sort of hold everything from dropping out the end and just eat as you go. So, a bit of fun. I mean, this was always our go-to bread when we ran out of bread when the kids were small. Yeah, when we ran out of bread, this was the one we made. And um, I will put a link to the original bread recipe for this if people want to just see the concise recipe and it's only about five minutes long, it'll show you it from start to finish. Um, so you don't want to watch this whole uh, live broadcast just to see how to make flatbread. So I've got a video, I've got two videos. I've got probably quite a few videos where I've used as one of them, I, I think I just, I was making a whole dish and I just knocked up these breads uh, to use for one recipe. But I've got a nice little short, concise five minute video to show you how to make these breads if you want to refer to it and not look through this whole, um, this whole live video live stream. So let's just talk a, a bit about this cheese. We got some, we, we went down, found these. One of the people who, who watches my show told me about a, a butcher's nearby uh, that does pork, which is unusual in uh, Turkey. Uh, my good mate, Rick, by the way, if you're still there, Rick, he drove to Istanbul virtually in his truck. He's got like one of these sort of head visors, you know, virtual reality kits. He drove all the way to Istanbul and did a video of that. It was a lot of fun to watch absolutely nuts but he came here he didn't even drop in and say hello how was that virtually drove here didn't virtually drop in and say hello to us so anyway that was a lot of fun he was eager to get to austria wasn't he? he was off to austria up in the alps so we got a we got a little cheese for them it, it tastes a little bit like an edam like a slightly mature edam we got some absolutely delicious um oh what do they call it uh Salami, it's a sort of salami. It's a, uh, that was great. And we got uh, sort of a prosciutto of sorts. A lovely, lovely piece of prosciutto, which would be great with some olives. I haven't got any olives at the moment. And I'm in seventh heaven because we haven't had any good meat for a little while. These are delicious. So, should we start to wrap up? Hey, Mio. Yes, hello. I'm going to, because of the, the position this camera's in, I'm not going to go on and chat. Unless, no. no, I won't chat. I'm, I'm looking for reassurance from Michelle. Well, we'd have to reposition it. We'd have to reposition, yeah, but we, we'll do an, another live update in a, in a few days. It's still locked down here. We're all going a bit stir crazy. We're not allowed outside the apartment this whole weekend, so we're going a bit nuts. We could do with a, a lovely walk, and the weather has been gorgeous here today. Anyone got any questions quickly so about? May says, hey, hey, greetings from Austria, lockdown over here. Oh, Rick was in Austria just uh, the other day, weren't you, Rick? So he could have <laughs> dropped in and said hello. <laughs> How beautiful. We love Austria. We were there uh, about 18 months or, or the year before last, Christmas before last, we, we drove through Austria. Um, absolutely beautiful. 
So any questions quickly about our predicament here in, in Istanbul? Um, any questions you want to ask about you know, why we're nuts and why we're traveling around the world like two maniacs for the last five years? Any questions you want to answer? Now is your chance before we, we sign off. Michelle's reading her book. Sorry, I'm just I can't read them from here, Michelle. I'm just checking that you've answered all the questions. So Mio says, um, I love you, maniacs. Thank you very much, Mio. <laughs> so no, let's just wait see if anybody else... Just wait and see if there are any questions. I really want to tuck into this uh, this wrap I've got here and, okay. and, and sit and enjoy it. Michelle is probably pretty hungry as well. I've got to cook a couple more. You, this easily scales up, by the way. So we went with about one cup of flour to about half a cup of water. I'd say... That's a good starting base, um, uh, but just you're going to have to add a little flour in to get it to the right texture. So Eric said, did you replenish the beer? I did not, and, and I probably will not. I don't know if the beer does me any good, to be honest. I, I do really, it's a shame. It's, it's almost like a, a pleasure that I, I, I can't um, repeat too often because I find beer tends to give me a bit of a... Um, I, I might even be a bit uh, sensitive to yeast in beer. I'm not sure. Chris Hereford's giving you a round of applause. And um, Stuart said, great show, Steve and Michelle. Looking forward to trying the recipe. See you soon. Off to off for dog walk. All right. <laughs> well, you're lucky you can go out. We, we've been stuck in here looking out the window. I was chatting to somebody through opposite in the opposite apartment today, so that was a bit of fun. Anyway, love to you all. Take care. And Michelle, we will see you. I've got to come over here to turn it all off. We will see you again very shortly. Be good.